the tune. I want to see this. Everyone needs new espresso machines. We'll come back to that. Yeah, I will definitely have to come back to that. So this is the Seneso ES1. And uh, we've done... Uh, what we've done is we've basically wanted to build a Seneso espresso machine for the home without cutting any corners. So we're using, you know, very similar uh, componentry to what we use in all of our commercial machines, which includes actually the same steam valve and the cool touch steam ones that we've always had. Uh, on top of that, we are with this machine trying to ride the line between what making espresso really is all about, which is the very tactile experience, you know, taking out the portafilter, tamping the coffee, doing all that work, while also giving folks a intuitive touchscreen display to be able to uh, interact with the machine and adjust settings for brewing. On our main flagship com uh, commercial machines, we have what we call MVP technology, which is manual volumetric programming. So we brought that to the home as well. I'm just gonna throw this here so it catches some water, but basically, if I hit the manual button up here on top, you're gonna see a super intuitive instructions on the screen. If I bump to the right, it goes into purge. It's gonna run for two and a half seconds. That's totally programmable if you just want a second or two. Uh, when I go to the left, I've got three stages of brewing control. The first is gonna go into pre-infuse, and that's uh, digitally settable, and right now it's at three and a half bars. I'm gonna bump again. Go up to nine bars, so that's our full infusion pressure. And when I've extracted as much as I want to get out of the coffee, I can bump the third time and it's going to go to ramp down. It's going to drop to seven. And then when I'm done, I go hit that and then it's going to show me my shot summary display. So it's showing us the time of extraction, the volume of water used to make the coffee, and the temperature as well. And if I want to get really nerdy, I can hit this little button in the bottom corner and it'll show me pressure and flow over time throughout the extraction. Oh, so look at all the little details there. So we're trying not to be too in your face with that information, but if you want it, it's totally there. And then if, if I tasted this and I said, wow, this is how I want my coffee to run every time I make coffee, I can hit the save button can either overwrite a preset that exists or I can create a new one. Uh, I can also, let's say that I was pulling a few espressos and you know, that one was okay, but two espressos ago, that was that was the good one. I can hit these little buttons and I can pull up the shot summary again for that or I can save the preset from the history. So and then the history just records all the espressos you made over time. So there's pretty much just the ability to at any moment go back and get what you we're using for the coffee. Um, you can pull up your presets in the preset mode. If you have a lot of them and you want to adjust them for workflow, you can hit this button and you can just drag and drop them into just set spots. That, or you can this little button. You can sort them by newest. Wow, that's that's a lot of functionality in something so like simple. Yeah. Um, how do you go and find out what the like if you have a preset selected, how do you go and find what's already set, what it's set to? What it's set to? Yeah. Uh, if you click on, I believe it's edit, you can go in and you can hit edit the preset itself, and then you can pull up all the different details of it. And you can even like, okay. you can even change the icons. And uh, we're still refining what those icons are going to be, but uh, there's. Can, make, can I make upload my own icons? Uh, not yet. Um, Oh, the, so the way this machine's functioning too, so this is our gauges, mm -hmm. is we have a much smaller coffee boiler, it's about half a liter. We have a pretty good size steam boiler in there. So 155 is our temperature, about 69 degrees Celsius uh, for the coffee boiler. 129 Celsius is the steam boiler, or 266. And in the steam boiler is this big heat exchange coil. So that's basically superheating the water. And then that other lower temp water is being mixed with that. We're using some valves and uh, in the computer system to control the temperature mix. And then that flows to the group head, which is uh, actively heated so that it's super stable. Um, and that's really cool. That's how we're letting this machine run at 15 amps uh, on 15 amps of power on 110 in oh, wow. North America. Um, but what's also really cool is that that hydraulic pathway for the group is the same that we use for the T-tap. 
And I say T-TAP specifically because we can program dispense volume and temperature of this. Temperature is from like 165 to 205. Uh, and the volume, you could, you could set it to whatever, say, your teapot volume is. So you can say, I want to do a green tea at 170 and I need 400 ml of water. And all you got to do is push the button. <coughs> What about buildup inside the the, the tank? Yeah, we talk about not not using the water from the the steam boilers. So this water isn't coming from the steam boiler. Okay. So it's just going through that heat exchange that's inside the steam boiler. So it's using that thermal energy. So the whole idea, right, is when we wanted to build something that was going to run on home power, you you got to have the steam there for steam, right? Uh, so we just wanted to utilize that energy that was going to exist anyway and kind of cheat and borrow as much of that as we could to, to power the rest of the machine. Gotcha. The other thing is if you're a roaster and you're doing like a farmer's market or like a pop-up event, uh, you know, you're making coffees for people, you got a big line, all of a sudden you're getting low on water. Uh, instead of having to like pull out the drain tray or remove things from the top to like upset your workflow, you just got to open a little door. Oh, beautiful. And that's, that fills the reservoir? That fills the reservoir, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. That's awesome. Best part of this entire machine. Yeah. Three, li three liter reservoir underneath, uh, so it's got quite a bit of water that it holds. Um, and you can plumb it in, of course, uh, but it's, it's no real need. Oh, that's uh, nice. Yeah. And so, oh, and then when we launch, we're going to have what we're calling automatic pre infusion. So <clears throat> that'll be toggleable in like your settings, you can just turn it on. And when you turn it on, uh, it'll automatically sense when the pressure has built up in the group in that first phase, and then it'll bump you into your infusion phase automatically. So if you're just making coffees in a kind of manual way, it'll just react to what's changing in your coffee. Uh, last thing I'll show you too is, you know, it's a home machine, so we want things to be really easy. We've got, you know, how to clean the machine as well built into it. Gotcha. Nice. I'm sorry, I gotta go because I'm about to be late for our surprise birthday situation. All right, I'm good go. to see you. I'll come back. Okay, see you soon. And this is better as it cools. Good. <laughs> how long the heat You're up right. turn it on? Uh, about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. And is it yeah. meant to be left on or left up? Or should so be? yeah, if, if the, the last button <clears throat> is actually sleep mode. And when you go into sleep mode or power save mode, it'll just reduce the temperature. It doesn't turn it off completely. And so then when you go back into wake, it'll heat up relatively quickly. Uh, but there are, you know, of course, settings inside of this too, so that you can uh, set timers on that for automatic sleep mode, automatic wake. Um, the other piece of this too, you know, we, we did the touch screen intentionally as well because we wanted to, I mean, I, I, I wake up in the morning, I roll out of bed, I go to make coffee, my phone is somewhere else, I don't want an app. Like, an app's fun, but like, when I'm making my first espresso in the morning, I need the machine. I need the machine to be there and to, to do what I need it to do. Yeah, you don't have to go dig it up and like, you know, attack to whatever. Exactly. Link into it. All yeah. right, so, how much? Uh, we are still, setting what the price is actually going to be, but we are going to be probably somewhere in the eight to nine range, uh, eight to 9,000. Um, How does that fit in with pricing for the rest of the semester? Yeah, so it is going to be like for our list price on our single group uh, Hydra, which is not a whole machine, it's a 220 machine. Um, that's a much more expensive machine. Full list on that is uh, closer to like, you know, $15,000. So, you know, almost half. Uh, but the goal with this is to, it's a premium product for sure. And we, we want to, we're going to be selling this on our website at Sinesto.com. Uh, is that the only way people will be able to get it? No, we'll of course work with other resellers and that sort of thing, but we are going to have an online store and with that in mind, knowing that this is a very premium product, we're also going to have accessories you can purchase that are also going to be equal quality. So we're working on, uh, you know, like higher end items, like we are gonna list the EK43 as, as a grinder you can purchase with your machine. Um, we're also gonna be selling the Malconic X54 here, which is a, a really nice little home grinder that we've enjoyed using this weekend. Uh, and we're also hoping to do some other collaborations and limited edition pieces as well. So we'll do cups and t-shirts and things for, you know, people to celebrate, you know, being a part of our little Seneso family, uh, but in, in limited quantities. Uh, we hope to do some collaborations on that sort of thing as well. And then, of course, customization will come to very shortly after launch. So we're working on, you know, wood options and alternative finishes. 
Um, we're really excited to utilize this blue that we've uh, put on this machine and do things like, like copper and gold accents. And, oh, it is yeah. a pretty blue, I do like that. Thank you, yeah, that's, uh, we're, we're pretty stoked about it. It's actually a custom powder coat color that we had manufactured. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what's the, what's the, like you, the, the Senesos have always had this, <clears throat> like the Hydra look, right? And then yeah. there's the S series that are, What's been the driving force between the design of this? Yeah, this is, a, I would say that this is our first half step going from where we've been historically with design into where we want to go. So, you know, we're, we're definitely wanting to embrace the idea that our machines don't have all, they, they, we want to make more beautiful machines is, is where I'm trying to go with this. Okay. We have always had really great technology. The machines are easy to use for folks once you kind of learn the programming. Um, I think that we've done a really good job of providing really useful brewing and extraction technology in a lot of our equipment. Uh, but we want to we want to come up with designs that are starting to fit well, uh, really naturally into a lot of like modern cafe design and aesthetic. So we're we're going to be progressing a little bit. So it's it's going to be a bit of a journey. Uh, we're going to have some fun with it. But is that to say this type of design aesthetic is going to start to creep its way into? The professional line? Yeah. Multi-group models? We're definitely like starting to think about what we want to do next on the commercial side of things. I mean, this user interface, this electronic system is, is something that we are really proud of and we see a future for it within commercial machines. Uh, I mean, in a lot of ways, this, this system here is like a tremendous step up from your commercial machines. Yeah, yeah, it is. It yeah. absolutely is. I think, you know, when we set out to do this project, we wanted to create a home machine that we hoped would be a little less expensive, but obviously build the materials and all that. Uh, considered now with the, the rising rate of prices and supply chain, it just hasn't worked out to be that way. But in the process, we've developed a lot of rich tech that's going to make commercial coffee even better uh, with this nice machine in the future. So that's, that's the next project. Nice, nice. Yeah, because like the other ones are very like brutish and like sharp in design. Yeah. And this is beautiful, like soft curves and yep. just a very pleasant looking feel to it. Yeah, it feels to me like a lot more like a, like we've tried to think through everything on this, okay. right? I mean, even like the little trapdoor reservoir fill, that's just a, a means of trying to think through how's the user gonna interact with it on the daily? Uh, what are the key touch points? Like how are they just interacting? And like, you know, like I said, intentionally choosing between having the manual making coffee process but also the digital interface uh, for all the like the little things that you want to be able to tweak with your coffee not not shoving one way or the other totally in your face it's kind of a, a healthy mix okay. nice. can we see some shot pulling yeah all right i'm not totally sure now where we are be rolled you don't have to make you don't have to like make excuses yeah yeah <laughs> no no apologies don't worry you're among sympathetic souls here <laughs> Well, I, I do. You see your proposal? I did. <laughs> I was like, man, I talk a lot. You don't know how much I cut out of that. Hey, we had time in the car, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not saying. There's no critical commentary there. All right, so this is the Malconi Gwet. X54, so it's their uh, home espresso grinder. that I am fairly confident to say right now that if we're at 76 mLs out, I'm probably somewhere around a 38 milliliter, or sorry, 38 uh, beverage weight uh, shot extraction measurement. How important do you think that is? Uh, since, since, I didn't, since I did not measure the coffee going in, it's not super important right now, but I think that the two most important things, well, I think the, the most important fundamental to any coffee extraction is using the right ratio 
and ratio on the espresso side, I think, is a very taste-driven thing. Uh, I think ratio is how... I think there are coffee companies that can identify like their style of coffee by their ratio, right? So you, it's kind of it's just like how it used to be in the beginning of third wave stuff, where it was all about ristretto, and how like you know uh, how you knew you were like a pioneering forward was that you pulled super tight shots, uh, and that's how you were part of the club. Nowadays, I think there's certain coffee bars you can go to where you got the big shots, and then you got kind of the medium shots. Me, I like to sit right in the middle. I'm a one to two guy. Okay. So, you know, for this, for this kind of output, I would, have, I would have hoped to have used 19 grams of coffee in the basket. Um, and that, and it, what that means for me is every time I taste a coffee, if I'm tasting at that ratio, that consistency allows me to kind of dial my own palate into the flavors and the experience of the coffee, where, you know, if, I, if it goes bigger, if it goes shorter, like, it might pull out or change, and I might experience some different things, but it's definitely different than what I'm used to tasting on the daily. Nice. All right.